We're in Slade, Kentucky, the home of the Kentucky Reptile Zoo, where they have more than 100 different species of venomous snakes. The main mission of the Kentucky Reptile Zoo is to extract venom for the production of anti-venom and also for medical research. Today, we're going to extract venom from a king cobra. Alright guys. Oh wow, this thing is strong. Yeah. So what do you think about how strong he is? It's amazing. I mean this is one big muscle. So what we've got here is this King Cobra Venom. How long will this venom stay potent in just normal air temperature? Well, it normal. actually can last a pretty long time. In order to preserve it as much as possible, we will freeze it here, mm -hmm. and then we do what's, what's called lyophilization, mm -hmm. which is freeze drying. It's the same way they make Folgers crystals. Okay, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't look like coffee, obviously. But uh, it, once it's done, it looks like yellow salt. At that stage, you can safely ship it right. wherever it right. needs to go. Because it's dry, it's a lot more safe and easy to deal with. So, but, so yeah. but this here, obviously if you were to get this on your skin, it may not hurt you, but if you have an open wound or if you touched it and then touched uh, your eyes or... Right, right. Yeah, be... you, you would not want to touch your eye uh, or mucous membrane mm -hmm. if you had venom on your finger, but if you had an open wound, it would be the same as being envenomated by the snake. So if you were going to take this and make an antivenom, obviously mm -hmm. you'd have to stay in the same species, but could you take two or three of the same type of snake and combine all that mm -hmm. and create antivenom. So, yep. okay. So when they make antivenom, they actually try to get a very large geographic representation of each species. Here in the U.S., you could use like timber rattlesnakes, which is the rattlesnake we have throughout much of Kentucky. If you're bitten in Kentucky, you want the antivenom to work as well for you as it does for someone who was bitten in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So you, the antivenom should be made from a wide range as possible. So you want multiple snakes. Right, that, right. That's now, there's two kinds of antivenom in the world. There's polyvalence, which is what we have here, mm -hmm. that are made from a representation of several species from an area. And they work on actually typically more species than they're made from. So if you're bitten by any pit viper mm -hmm. in the United States, it is the same antivenom. Gotcha. So you don't really need to worry about what kind of snake it was. That's kind of a myth where people think, oh, I oh, need yeah. to know what it was for sure. And you know, the doctors are going to ask you because they're curious. Mm -hmm. but. You don't actually have to know. If you have systemic symptoms from a snake bite in the United States, you will get the same antivenom no matter what kind of snake it was. So we've talked a little bit about venom and how, mm -hmm. you, how you can make antivenom, but there's other things that you use as venom for as well, right? Right, so actually most of the venoms that we provide are used for medical research mm -hmm. or biological research, either at a university or um, pharmaceutical company, something of that nature. A few examples of current research, uh, and a couple of the best ones are there's uh, cancer research going on with South American rattlesnake venom. Um, there's actually cancer research going on with several snakes. Copperheads are also used oh, really? in cancer yeah. research, actually. Um, there is research for uh, stroke and uh, blood clots. And actually, a wide variety of clotting disorders of uh, venoms can be used potentially to help treat them. Uh, pain control. Some people may have seen an article about mamba venom being used mm -hmm. in pain control. Uh, I think it came out last year. Um, our snakes were actually used in that study. So uh, there's a lot of exciting avenues. Venom is very biologically active, obviously, because the snake uses it to kill its food. Oh, yeah. But it has a lot of interesting activities that can really potentially help people out one day. So what can kill you actually can keep you alive. That's right. And for anyone who wants to come see this, you guys are open seven days a week? Between Memorial Day and Labor Day, we're open seven days a week. Mm -hmm and uh, extraction is at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. We always recommend that people call ahead to make sure there will be a venom extraction that day. Uh, if Jim is, has to go out of town or is unhealthy, I don't volunteer to do the venom <laughs> extraction, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if people want to be sure to see it, they can always call us the morning of. We'll be happy to tell them what's on the schedule that day. 
Well, I've learned a lot about venom today. Well, I've, as much as, as I, the way I've wanted to learn about it with an expert just talking about it and not at a doctor's office. Yes, so. no, that's not the way you want to find out no. about it. More than you wanted to know, probably. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. No that. problem.